done. Anyway, I want to uh, welcome the uh, chorus from Great Lakes uh, this morning. And, uh, they've been practicing here since right after 9 o'clock, so they're, I don't know if they're all sung out or not. They're all too hoarse to carry on. I don't think so. I think they're going to do just fine. Anyway, uh, we are very glad that it's been a number of years since the chorus has been here in Oman. And uh, so it was well before COVID, uh, you see. So uh, anyway, we're glad that we finally got back and he, he arranged for it to come. We need to come. So uh, I, I think we're going for a good retreat here in the next several minutes. So. I guess with that, uh, Josh uh, Hunter, we'll turn it over to you, okay? Oh uh -huh. 
Well, as we sing about the greatness of our God, we see that God is awesome simply by who He is. But we also see His greatness by what He's done. And this next song is a song that takes us all the way back to uh, the people of Israel when they were enslaved in Egypt. And God showed His mighty power uh, by rescuing His people and setting them free from slavery in the land of Egypt. So this song is a kind of a fun take on that as we think about the story uh, called Go Down Moses. And as we sing it, I encourage you to just reflect on the greatness of God and His redemption.
He could save us so that we could have fellowship with God once again. Uh, we're going to sing uh, two songs. We're going to sing Joy to the World and Angels We Have Heard on High in just a minute. And they're songs that reflect that powerful, powerful uh, truth of God coming to the earth. But before we do, I just wanted to read to you a really short uh, story that I, that I came across that I think sets the tone for what we're singing about. Because sometimes we sing songs like this, these beautiful hymns that were written a couple hundred years ago, and, and we know them off by heart because we've heard them, maybe even playing in the, the grocery store. Uh, we've heard them our whole lives, but we don't necessarily think about the depth of the meaning. And so I was thinking about the incarnation, and this story popped into my mind, and I wanted to share it with you this morning. It's a story of a man named David Platt who is uh, standing outside a Buddhist temple in Indonesia, and, uh, and he's engaged in a conversation with some religious leaders from different religions in the world. And the story goes like this. They were discussing how all religions are fundamentally the same and only superficially different. They said, we may have different views about small issues, but when it comes down to essential issues, each of our religions is the same. I listened for a while, and when they asked me what I thought, I said, it sounds as though you all pictured God, or whatever you call God, at the top of a mountain. And it seems as if you believe that we are all at the edge of that mountain, and I may take one road up the mountain, and you may take another, and we all end up in the same place. And they smiled as I spoke, and happily they replied, exactly, you understand. Then I leaned in and said, now let me ask you a question. What would you think if I told you that the God at the top of the mountain actually came down to where we are? What if I told you that God doesn't wait for people to find his way to them, but instead comes to us? They thought for a moment and then responded, that would be great. I replied, let me introduce you to Jesus. This is what sets Christianity apart from every other system of thinking in the world, that we don't have to try to find our way to some God up there some way. But God, the creator of the universe, has made himself known through Jesus Christ. By, through the incarnation, by coming to this earth, God in the flesh. And if we want to know what God is like, we look to Jesus. And that is cause for good news of great joy. So we're going to sing Joy to the World together. We'd love for you to sing with us if you know it. So feel free to sing along as we sing together. 